Right, it's time to add into our collection the interval of a perfect fourth. Perfect fourth. And so our intervals are getting slightly closer together because we now have a third, a fourth, and a fifth that we're trying to separate out. And so this is where we're trying to just sharpen your sense of pitch a little bit more. Eventually, if you practice this enough times, there'll be no mistaking the interval of a fourth and the interval of a fifth. They will seem as different as black and white. To start with, they might sound quite similar. So we just got to get that sound of the fourth into our head and just hear how it's different from the fifth and the third that we've looked at already. So what does a fourth sound like? Well, a fourth sounds a little bit like this. Now let's just compare that to the fifth, which is one note higher, and the third, which is one note lower. So there is a different sound there. It will be hard at first, but we can lock on to that different sound, something that's not a third and not a fifth, but instead a fourth. Now, in my mind, I feel like the, the fourth is not quite as stable as an interval as the third and the fifth. When we hear those two, that's kind of fine. And that's kind of fine. That, that sounds quite stable and solid. When I hear the fourth, I almost feel like it's pulling down to the third. Just listen again. Because we hear that quite a lot in music, that sort of movement from the interval of a fourth together, which is probably unstable and not really resolved, to this interval of a major third, which does sound resolved and kind of finished. So that's the next one to practice. This one might be more tricky than the other two that we've looked at so far, so good luck with it, and I'll see you in the next one.